race to the moon and India does not want to be left behind. ISRO's Chandrayaan-3 is all set to make a soft landing on the moon. But why are we going to the moon in the first place? And what will we even do there? India has been exploring the lunar world for over a decade. It all began with Chandrayaan, which eventually ended up finding water on the moon. There was a brief pause due to the partial failure of Chandrayaan-2. But now with Chandrayaan-3, we hope to land on the moon once and for all. And we have a lot to do there. The mission's Chandra Surface Thermophysical Experiment, or CHAST, will measure the thermal conductivity and temperature. In simpler terms, we'll understand how fast or how slow the Moon conducts heat from its one side to the other. The Instrument for Lunar Seismic Activity, or ILSA, will measure the seismicity around the landing site. Seismic waves are generated when rock within the crust breaks, producing tremendous amount of energy, similar to what happens during our earthquakes. So can there also be quakes on the Moon? Guess we'll have to find out. The Langwer probe will estimate the plasma density and its variations. Plasma density is the concentration of ionized gas particles. How stuffy is Moon's air exactly? Chandrayaan's 3 rover will carry out in situ chemical analysis of the lunar surface. What's beneath the Moon's surface? Gold? Minerals? We want to know it all. But this is also beyond scientific endeavors. This is a space race, and ISRO will not be left behind. There are only three countries, USA, erstwhile USSR, and China, who have gone to the moon so far. India wants to be the fourth. India is competing with China, which has approved the fourth phase of its lunar exploration program and will launch missions to the moon apart from beginning work to construct a lunar research station. The US and Europe are already planning to launch humans to the moon. With its Artemis missions, NASA has already announced the names of the four astronauts who will go into lunar orbit over half a century after the end of Apollo missions. India wants to strengthen its place in the new lunar race. Three years ago, we almost failed. ISRO lost contact with Chandrayaan-2. The communication from lander to ground station was lost. Our lander Vikram crashed on the moon's surface. Many thought that this was the end to India's journey to the moon. Yet, our scientists did not give up and now we are going back to the moon. ISRO is all set to launch Chandrayaan-3 from Satish Dhawan Space Center. Chandrayaan-3 will aim to do what Chandrayaan-2 couldn't, land on the moon. But the moon is not gonna make it easy. Landing on the moon is tough and it requires precision. Any misstep can lead to a mission failure. Two things matter the most when making a landing on the moon. The speed and swing of the lander. The lander speed needs to be reduced autonomously to 3 meters per second to ensure a soft landing. Moon has one-sixth of the Earth's gravity. The reduced gravitational force makes it ever more necessary to control the descent rate as it's a natural deceleration. The Moon's surface poses the greatest challenge. The Moon has vast craters and loosely held rocks and soil. ISRO has thought of multiple landing options. Chandrayaan-3 has two lander hazard detection and avoidance cameras. Inputs from this will be sent to Mission Control to make the final decision on landing. Yet the lander will take the actual decision due to the time delay in sending inputs to Earth. ISRO has learned lessons from the previous setback. Chandrayaan-3 is similar to Chandrayaan-2 in terms of its architectures, the scientific objective, the mission, everything is same. But what we did is that we had a, we had a failure in landing safely at the required velocity in the lander, but the orbiter is still there, it is working beautifully to give the scientific instruments, are doing the measurements and we are getting enough of data. But the final target of landing softly on the moon could not be achieved. We are ready to go to the moon. After the previous failure, Chandrayaan-3 has gone through some awesome upgrades. Let's check what's new. First up, we have the Chandrayaan-3 lander, rover and propulsion module. These three amazing pieces work together to explore the moon. The propulsion module, weighing a whopping 2,148 kilograms, is responsible for carrying Chandrayaan-3 into its final lunar orbit. The current landers for Chandrayaan-3 are equipped with not four, but five motors. More motors mean better flexibility and control. Now let's talk about a super important addition this time. It's called SHAPE, which stands for Spectropolarimetry of Habitable Planet Earth. SHAPE allows us to study our very own planet Earth from its lunar orbit. Isn't that mind-blowing? We're learning about our home while exploring the moon. And that's not all. 
Chandrayaan-3 also carries a special lunar traveler weighing 26 kilograms. This little explorer will analyze the mineral composition of lunar rocks and soil. According to ISRO Chairman S. Somanath, introducing the laser Doppler velocity meter, a brand new sensor that will help us examine the moon's terrain using laser technology will be introduced. It's like having super powered eyes to see the lunar secrets. Now let's talk about how Chandrayaan-3 gets into space. It's like a puzzle coming together. The spacecraft is mated with Lunar Vehicle Mark III, India's heaviest rocket. This giant rocket weighs a staggering 640 tons and measures a whopping 43.5 meters in length. It's a true space beast. The overall length of LVM-3 is 43.5 meters with 5 meter diameter payload. With all these incredible advancements, Chandrayaan-3 is ready to uncover the moon's mysteries. Who knows what secrets lie hidden there? Our brilliant scientists at ISRO are already determined to find out. With the hullabaloo around the much-awaited mission of Chandrayaan-3, you must be wondering how much this mission costs. Rupees 615 crore. That's the cost of the third lunar mission. Now that sounds like a lot, right? But wait, this is not the highest cost incurred by ISRO. The previous mission was estimated to be around Rs. 960 crores. In fact, it is much cheaper than Adi Purush budget. Now let's break up the cost allotted to the mission. Out of 615 crores, Rs 250 crores was allotted to the rover lander and propulsion module, 365 crores to the launch service and in fact the initial funding of the project was just Rs 75 crore out of which Rs 60 crore was for machinery and equipment, 15 crore for revenue heads. India is globally lauded for its cost-effective space missions. In fact, Mangalyaan was the cheapest mass mission in the world. The interplanetary mission was developed at a budget of Rs 450 crores. But isn't going to the moon old news? After all, American astronaut Neil Armstrong was the first person to walk the moon in 1969, more than 50 years ago. And we know more about the moon's surface compared to the depths of the ocean on our own planet. So why are we still obsessed with going to the moon? And why is it relevant for India? First off, moon is a record of solar system history. The most popular theory for the creation of the moon is what is known as the planet crash theory. It is believed that around 30 to 50 million years after the Earth was born, a large rock named Theia crashed into the planet. If the planet crash theory is to be believed, the moon is made up of remnants of the early Earth and so offers the best insight into the early history of our planet and perhaps the solar system. Secondly, water, the most essential for human sustenance. India's first moon mission, Chandrayaan-1, launched in 2008, already discovered the presence of water molecules on the moon's surface. So the moon would be an ideal space pit stop to gather this resource. This brings us to the third reason. Lunar rice could be a fuel source. Water is made up of hydrogen and oxygen. And if those two atoms can be separated and stored, they can fuel a rocket. That's because hydrogen and oxygen are highly flammable and when they are burned together, they release a huge amount of energy, enough to propel a rocket. That means, at least in theory, lunar rice could provide water to drink, air to breathe and a source of propellant for spaceships to fuel and head out. For many space enthusiasts, its exploration and exploitation is necessary if we are to make the next giant step in space. We have found some of the most extreme environments of the solar system on the moon. With the absence of air, to balance the heat from the sun, the moon can see its temperature reach over 125 degrees Celsius during daytime and dip to minus 173 degrees Celsius in the night. Any water present on lunar surface would almost certainly have boiled off in these conditions. This gives way to the fifth reason, possibly living on the moon. And as per NASA, humans are already on track to live and work on the moon by 2030. To live on the moon, humans will need to shield themselves from radiation coming from the sun and deep space. One way to do this might be to live in the moon inside lava tubes that formed billions of years ago. Scientists have yet to discover what's inside them. For more informative videos like this, keep watching India Today Newsmo.